Coming up on today's show. General Motors announces a second recall for all Bolt EVs affected by its first battery recall after admitting the problem hasn't been fixed. Tesla officially begins offering full self-driving as a subscription service, but there is a catch, and a team of researchers at TU Graz debut a robotic charging assistant that could make it easier for people with disabilities to own an EV. These stories and more coming next. Welcome back to TEN, Transport Evolved News. It has been another jam-packed week, and I'm glad that you're here so we can go through its most important news stories together. This show is sponsored by the Electric Auto Association. Stick around until the end of the show to find out how joining the EAA can help you finance your own clean energy or transportation purchases. One week after it told owners of 2017 through 2019 Bolt EVs to park their cars outside and not to leave them charging overnight, Chevrolet has issued an official recall for the same. Announced on Friday morning, this second recall will see Chevy re-examine every 2017 through 2019 Bolt EV after two manufacturing defects were discovered with the LG Energy Supplied Battery Pack in those affected cars. GM doesn't appear at this time to have a solid plan of action and is being pretty vague about what exactly will happen, but it expects most Bolt EVs will need at least one battery module replacing. Unfortunately, Chevy also says that owners should re-enable Hilltop Reserve or 90% target charge mode and not drive below 70 miles of indicated remaining range. When we have more info, we'll share. It's been four years since Tesla unveiled the Tesla Semi, and in the intervening time, we've had several missed deadlines for what should have been the start of production. First 2019, then 2020, and now 2021. But according to several sources, Tesla is rumored to have completed its drive axle production line at Giga Reno and is going through the final debugging process of the Tesla Semi General Assembly line. If these rumors are true, we could could see initial Tesla Semi production commence in the next month or two, but we're not expecting huge production volumes just yet. It's expected that just five Tesla Semis will be completed every week by the end of this year, partly because of the sheer size of each vehicle. It's worth remembering, too, that this production line may not be the Semi's permanent home, as Giga Texas will likely take over Semi production when it's finished. There's been lots of talk in the automotive world about the tipping point at which electric vehicles are more popular than internal combustion engine vehicles. Norway, of course, has already hit that point, though few countries are close to matching that. But in the UK, leasing and fleet management company Zenith says it crossed that point in June, with more battery electric vehicle orders submitted for company car leases than internal combustion engine ones. Granted, company car leasing represents only part of a wider automotive vehicle sales market, but given the popularity of company car and salary sacrifice car schemes in the UK, where employees can sacrifice part of their pay packet to get a great company car lease, EVs, thanks to the tax savings they offer, are a no-brainer. Here's hoping that with more electric company cars coming onto the road, an increase in private EVs will follow. Sticking with Europe, Thomas Ulbrich, head of Volkswagen brand development, said this week that stricter emissions regulations due to come into force across the EU in the next few years will make petrol and diesel cars less profitable than EVs. The new engine emission standards, known as Euro 7, are the toughest yet and will require automakers to jump through some pretty large hoops to make compliant ICE vehicles. And the cost of trying to comply will just eat some of the automakers' usual profit margins, meaning making and selling EVs rather than Euro 7 ICE vehicles will be a no-brainer. And since all automakers are in the business of making money, I'm going to put my cynical hat on and predict they'll suddenly be far more interested in making EVs than they once were. Following the rollout of FSD V9 Beta to its fleet of beta program test participants last week, not to mention the positive feedback from those participants as to functionality, Tesla opened the order books for FSD subscriptions this week. To become an FSD subscriber, you'll need to pay $199 or equivalent every month. And if you have a Tesla with V2.5 or older 
autopilot hardware in it, you'll also need to pay to have Tesla's upgrade to your car autopilot hardware. Tesla was originally asking customers $1,500 to do the upgrade, but after backlash has lowered that to $1,000. While you'll be able to subscribe to FSD, you won't actually get to use FSD yet as it's not out of beta. But you will get advanced autopilot, which includes things like automatic lane change and more. Rivian has long been rumoured to be working on expanding its production facilities around the world, and this week we learned via Reuters that it's actively been looking to build a second production facility in the US, and may be about to announce where that will be. Citing documents submitted to state economy development officials as of a plant codenamed Project Terra, something Reuters says is Rivian's internal codename for a new production facility, the news agency says that Rivian is due to notify the successful state – there have been several – it's been courting – sometime this summer. The facility will include a new research and development centre, expanded additional production facilities for the R1T and R1S, and a 50 gigawatt hour cell production line that will be opened in stages. Watch this space. One of the world's largest mining operations, BHP, has been in the news not once but twice this week, first due to a rumour midweek that suggests executives are looking to end its participation in the oil and gas industry. Having been in the oil and gas industry since the 1960s, and with assets in the Gulf of Mexico and off the coast of Australia, that's big news alone. But perhaps equally as big is the news that it's just signed a massive deal with Tesla to become a major supplier of nickel. According to the company's official press release, it will supply Tesla with nickel from its Nickel West facility in Western Australia, which it claims is one of the world's most sustainable and lowest carbon emissions nickel production facilities. There's no mention of total yield, but given Tesla's annual production goals, it's believed to be pretty substantial. In keeping with the fondness that the financial and the automotive EV startup world seems to have for reverse mergers with special purpose acquisition companies, or SPACs for short, we've had a never-ending stream of stories about them this year. Now we've got two more to add to the list – Lucid and Faraday Future. Lucid announced midweek that its merger between it and Churchill Capital Corp 4 CCIV, has been approved by shareholders. It will begin trading next week on the Nasdaq under the LCID ticker, even though it hasn't yet shipped any cars. Faraday Future, meanwhile, which frankly we'd given up on as dead, actually started trading on the stock market this week after its successful SPAC. It says the merger will mean it can get its FF91 into production, but honestly, after seven years of not much but promises, I'm doubtful. Nobody likes having their car written off after an accident. Dealing with the insurance company getting repair estimates filed isn't anyone's idea of fun. But now the ABI, that's the Association of British Insurers, wants to help bring some good out of the bad. As part of a drive towards decarbonising the automotive industry, it wants insurance firms to encourage drivers to make more sustainable choices after their car has been totaled in an accident. This could include enabling or incentivising customers to switch to a comparable electric vehicle after their car has been written off. It also wants insurers to encourage the development of a sustainable secondary market for EVs, better deal with written off EVs to ensure better recycling and handling of components, and it also wants insurance and long-term savings firms to invest more than £1 trillion sterling into green infrastructure. This could be an interesting one to watch. For a really long time, we've heard naysayers of electric vehicles state that it's impossible to transition the world's fleet to electric because it would just bring down the electrical grid. We've long debunked that for personal passenger vehicles, but now a new study from the US's National Renewable Energy Laboratory has shown that around 80 to 90 percent of the US's short haul transportation fleet, currently serviced by diesel trucks, could be replaced by electric ones all rapid charging, with no required upgrades to the local electricity substations. Charge those trucks from lower power charging stations, such as you'd get from overnight charging, and even fewer modifications to the electrical grid would be required. And that's fantastic news indeed. And now it's time for short shorts. 
Porsche has announced it's partnering with BASF to develop and produce high-performance lithium-ion NCM battery cells for fast charging and high energy density. A production facility making said cells will go online in 2024. After acquiring Maxwell Technology a few years ago, which included technology it used in its 4680 form factory cells, Tesla has sold Maxwell's ultracapacitor division to UCAP Power, a company, by the way, that includes former Tesla and Maxwell employees. According to a new report from the US Department of Energy, nearly 70% of cells and 87% of battery packs made for US light-duty plug-in vehicles were actually made in the US, making the US the leader in local content battery packs. The diminutive Wulung Hongguan Mini EV has enjoyed thoroughly impressive sales this year, but during June the tiny car sold just 29,000 examples. The reason? The same global microprocessor shortage affecting all automakers and industries. Rivian has secured a deal with Tennessee State Parks to establish charging stations for its customers at locations across the state. The charging stations in question will be lower powered level 2 units and apparently will be open for all EVs to use. General Motors is currently working on introducing a number of new plug-in models to its various brands, but this week we learned that GMC, which is already bringing the Hummer EV SUT and Hummer EV SUV to market, will also bring a full-size electric pickup to market. I'm guessing it will share parts with the Silverado EV. Pirelli has been detailing the brand new tyres it's developed alongside Lucid for use in the upcoming Lucid Air. An EV version of the popular P0 tyre, it has a high load rating, low rolling resistance, but also the same sporty handling characteristics as the regular P0. Another new study, this time by the International Council on Clean Transportation, has yet again debunked the myth that electric cars are worse for the planet than internal combustion vehicles when plugged into a dirty grid. Sorry, naysayers. As part of its push towards becoming EV only within the next 10 years, at least in most markets, Mercedes-Benz has purchased UK motor specialist Yasa. The company will become a 100% owned subsidiary of the automaker. Suzuki and Daihatsu, two automakers not known for their EV prowess, have joined a commercial electric vehicle coalition led by Toyota. Each will acquire a 10% stake in the venture and will focus on developing small electric trucks and cars. Tesla has yet again pushed up pricing for its Model 3 and Model Y. It's becoming hard to keep track, but one argument for Tesla's sales model was avoiding dealer markups. With these frequent price changes, that's less apparent than it once was. The first batch of NIO ES8 electric SUVs have arrived in Norway, ahead of their European market launch later this year. While the cars have European-type approval, it'll take a few weeks for the cars to be prepared for their September debut. A Bank of America Global Research Report warns that there's a looming problem in the global EV battery industry, warning that unless things change pretty quickly, the automotive industry will run out of all EV batteries by 2025. Honda, now coming around to the idea of producing and making electric vehicles, is on the lookout for like-minded automakers to partner with. It already has an established long-term partnership with GM, but apparently wants an open relationship. The state of Colorado has scrapped its plans that would have required companies to incentivize their employees to use alternative transportation to get to work. According to the state, just too many businesses objected to the program, so it was scrapped. Amtrak has begun to assess a new potential electrified train service between Scranton and New York City in New York. It's one of 39 new proposed electrified Amtrak routes supported by the Biden administration. MG has launched a new variant of the MG5 EV in the UK, complete with 61.1 kilowatt hour battery pack and 250 miles of range. It will retail from £26,495 post grant. Uber and Lyft drivers went on strike on Wednesday this week to demand better work conditions, improved pay and legal protections. They're part of a new group called Rideshare Drivers United. They say both companies have broken their promises to treat drivers better following California's Proposition 22 from 2020. That said, if Lyft gets its way, these drivers may soon be unemployed, as Ford, Argo, AI and Lyft have all gotten together to launch self-driving cars by the end of this year on the Lyft network. 1,000 autonomous cars will be rolled out in the next five years. 
following on from its announcement that James Bond will indeed be driving a plug-in hybrid in the next Bond movie, Aston Martin has said it will be making all electric replacements for the current Vantage and DB11. GM is coming under fire after refusing to pay a warranty replacement for a Bolt TV, which caught fire last year, leaving the owner some $12,000 in the red on a car they no longer own. GM has stated that the fire, caused by its faulty batteries, voided his warranty. Tesla is said to be looking to hire more staff at its showrooms around the world as demand for the S, X, 3 and Y soar. As people venture out back into malls and shopping centres, Tesla's physical locations are ramping up their teams. India's Ola Mobility Company received more than 100,000 pre-orders for its upcoming Ola scooter when order books opened earlier this month. The final pricing of the e-scooter is yet to be revealed. Fisker has announced that its production version of the Ocean SUV will debut at the LA Auto Show, with production due to start at the tail end of next year. Given we saw the Ocean looking pretty production-ready at CES 18 months ago, I'm confused. As terrifying floods swept across much of Western Europe, Tesla flicked the switch on its supercharger network to give free charging sessions to those fleeing flood-stricken areas. Nicely done, Tesla. Thank you for doing the right thing. Omega Motors, a retroelectric motorcycle company, has revealed the EV200, a retro take on the iconic Honda CB200. Fitted with a 48 volt, 1.6 kilowatt hour battery pack, it'll win no races or range tests, but it's hecking beautiful. Elon Musk has confirmed that Tesla won't be offering a regular round wheel as an option for the new Tesla Model S and Tesla Model X. If you want one, you'll have to be content to drive with the steering yoke instead. XL Fleet Corp, a company that specialises in vehicle electrification solutions for commercial and governmental fleets, has announced a new programme to build electrified solar refrigerator trailer e-solutions for big rigs. I really like the look of these. And those are your short shorts. There will be more next week. Just like the startup electric vehicle world was alive with exciting ideas and eager startups about a decade ago, so too is the electric aviation industry full of fresh faced companies wanting to revolutionise the way we travel by air. But this week we learned that one of them, electric vertical takeoff and landing specialist Lilium, which has been heavily invested in by companies like Daimler, is allegedly running out of cash. The company has reportedly amended its 2019 balance sheet to state that its continued existence is at risk, and now it says that it will run out of money by the end of next year unless it can successfully complete its upcoming reverse merger. Watch this space. And finally, the act of plugging in your electric car to recharge it might seem like a simple one. After all, if everything is working as it should, the whole process can take less than a minute. But for those who have disabilities and so are either unable to handle a heavy charge cable or find reaching the charging station physically difficult, the need to plug in their car could prevent them from going electric. Which is where TU Graz, working with Austrian companies Alveri and Arti Robots, come in. They've developed a fully autonomous mobile charging robot that can find a parked electric car, open the charge port door and just plug in. The robots are not only great for helping assistance for drivers with disabilities and charging their EV, but could also provide charging assistance to large fleets who want to go all electric. As a bonus, it's also far less scary than those dancing dog robots that you know one day will rule the world's battlefields. Yeah. No. And on that note, we are done for the day. But before I go, I would like to thank the Electric Auto Association for sponsoring today's show. They have been advocating for electric vehicles since 1967, and they firmly believe that our future depends on us making the switch to clean, green electric cars today. The EAA can help you find someone near to you that can help you make the switch to electric. It can help you become an EV educator, and it can point you in the direction of monthly meetups for like-minded EV fans. And if you become a member, you'll gain access to a new clean energy and EV loan program set up between the EAA and the Colorado Clean Energy Credit Union. You can find out more by heading to electricauto.org. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel, hitting that bell, and doing the same to our two other channels as well. That's Transport Evolved Take Two and Transport Evolved Shorts. We'd also love you to support us through Patreon or Ko-fi if you're so inclined. And don't forget that you can buy your own TE swag like this at our Red Bubble store. The link is below. And if you're feeling chatty, don't forget to drop by our free to join Discord chat room. 
I or someone else from the team will be back soon with more video goodness. But until next time, thanks for joining me and keep evolving.